Hello, everybody, and welcome to the University of Ethereum. For this week's workshop, I'm bringing up Remington Rodney from Proof of Talent. Today, we're going to talk about building a personal brand in Web3 and leveraging the power of social media and relationship building. Now, Remy is someone I've seen very active in the event space, going to events in San Diego, in Denver, um, and just very active even in Paris at ETCC. I've seen him at so many different events and, you know, just watched his journey unfold and, and the, the power of, you know, leveraging relationship building to grow your personal brand. I think Remy is a pro at this. Uh, so without further ado, I will pass it off to you, Remy. Amazing, amazing. Thank you so much, Rachel, for the opportunity. Shout out to our relationship and just University of Ethereum. You guys are really doing some incredible stuff in the ecosystem to educate, you know, whether it's crypto curious people or people already in the in the space to level up their career in so many different ways. And so today we're gonna be diving into personal branding in Web3. And I'm a conduit and firm believer that this is one of the most important strategies to be successful in this ecosystem, specifically leveraging social media and building authentic relationships. So let's dive into it. Just some background on myself. I lead partnerships at Proof of Talent. We are a Web3 recruiting agency. We've actually now been in the space for over five years, supporting hundreds of different companies in the space, placing over 200 people in the ecosystem as well. And um, I guess my journey into Web3, uh, I've now been in the ecosystem for two years, specifically in talent. So not only have I been on the client facing side, but also placing talent too. And a lot of that is educating. Not everyone that you work with as a recruiter in a recruiting agency, you're going to help find a job. And there's to be, you know, kind of differentiate yourself. You have to find out what are some other resources and tools that can help them grow. And for me, that was always personal branding, always explaining to them how leveraging LinkedIn, Twitter, all these different social media platforms can help them grow. And that's allowed me to also do the same. Um, when I joined the Web3 space, I had around 2,000 followers on LinkedIn, which is pretty crazy to think about, and just inching away at 9,000 now too. And that's all from just being authentic and, and consistent. So, but I think some of you guys are asking, you know, Remy, how did you get into the Web3 space? And for a lot of us, it's a very, you know, non-traditional background. And it's the same for me. Um, back in 2018, I started a clothing brand called Virtual. It was probably one of the most important foundational moments for me in my career as an entrepreneur, building a community, going through the process of building a brand, its strategy for marketing, social media and content, shipping product, selling out clothing collections. At the same time, I was selling luxury cars, getting really, really good experience of building authentic and genuine relationships, not transactional. And I think that's like a major, major point to really touch on for people within branding as well is, you know, the way you present yourself is your reputation, you know, and that's how you treat other people as well. That's how you can be remembered. And kind of going from that fashion brand owner to selling luxury cars, I moved to San Diego and that's actually when I first started getting my feet wet in Web3. Um, got a really, really good friend of mine that both Rachel and I did a Twitter space with, Sweetman.eth, that is one of the top Web3 developers in the music NFT realm. He told me about the power of decentralization, how this was a technological revolution, something that I felt like I could not miss out on as a futurist. And that's when I got into recruiting. I joined a recruiting agency at the time called Hamlin Williams. We we're a global agency, had offices all over the world. I had the honor of building out their Web3 like vertical from scratch. And that's when I really started to just double down in the space. And trust me, I didn't know anything about crypto. I didn't know anything about blockchain. It felt really awkward at times meeting with these executives and people, but just asking questions, being curious, being, being um, you know, just very curious as to what this space is about and how you can connect with the community. And kind of looking at things today, I've, Two years later, I've now had the opportunity to travel the world speaking at different conferences like ECC, ETH Denver, different Twitter spaces, and really just being an advocate for talent in the ecosystem and also personal branding. So kind of transitioning here, I want to bring you guys through a step-by-step -step as to 
getting started within personal branding because i think for a lot of a lot of us it's like well where do i begin you know what is the right process and the first step um kind of moving forward here the first step is reflection self-awareness really being able to tap into yourself and have that internal awareness as to who i am what are my skills what makes me authentic where do i want to go what's the trajectory of the career that i'm looking for being able to identify that there's a lot of different really cool tools and resources to do that also being able to do that with people that you trust asking them for their opinion and advice as well and it's not only the skills as a professional but it's also the hobbies what are you passionate about for me it's it's nature it's travel it's community for some of you guys it might be comedy memes research analytics being able to combine all of those elements together and then putting that into your social profile putting that into your brand presenting that to when you're meeting other people creates common ground and i think that's the big thing with personal branding is commonality with the audience that you're building the next step is DIOR, do your own research. Once you've now understood your purpose, who you are, where you wanna go, what skills you have that can really level up this industry and add value, the next step is to find other like-minded people that have already been in this ecosystem, already making an impact. Different leaders, different CEOs, different um, projects that are doing really, really incredible stuff in the space, study them, learn from them, connect to the people on the team. For example, if you're someone coming into this ecosystem and your background is in news, research, maybe analytics, you should be going to companies like Blockworks, Coindesk, Bankless, maybe Dune, maybe Masari, going on LinkedIn, going on Twitter, finding people at that company, finding people that are advocates for those ecosystems and try to learn from them, interact with their content, interact with what they're doing, and most importantly, network with them. Set up a Zoom call, you know, show your authenticity, start building a long-term relationship. I'm sure Rachel can be a testament to this as well. Like you never know what's gonna happen with some of these opportunities and relationships that you build down the line, a year, two years down the line, if you keep showing up. So DYOR, please. The next step is experimentation. And this is big. I think a lot of people, once you do your research, will see that these influencers, these leaders in the space are very consistent. They're getting maybe a lot of engagement, a lot of likes, um, and just have a big community. You know, for someone that's brand new at starting your uh, personal brand, it might not be the same and it's going to take time. So, my recommendation is to start small build up that composure, build up that confidence to the point where you've understood your niche, you've understood some different pieces of content or different communities and relationships that you're building that you want to double down in. But I've done this so many times throughout my career where I see the end goal, I see the end vision, and I want to start from that, posting five times a week. And it's not sustainable. It's not sustainable and it's going to burn you out. So start small and allow that to build help you build confidence. And the last step is implementation. This is big. To become more, you have to do more, right? And so taking action, showing up for yourself and being consistent at the same time. That is the exact reason why the successful people in Web3 are successful. Whether it's going through the bear market, or it's going through the bull market. Every single day, they're showing up, trying to add value to their respective communities, to their respective ecosystem in their own unique way. Where to be active? This is big, guys. This is what separates Web3 from so many other industries, is that social media is your portal to opportunities, success, and relationships. And not like other industries, that's on platforms like Discord. I've, I remember meeting someone at Eat Denver that's on the Bankless team now, and she told me she got her job from showing up in that community every single day. 
just adding value in her own unique way and getting a position. That's crazy. That's not how other industries work. And we'll dive into that more too. But Twitter, everyone knows like Web3 and crypto Twitter is the heartbeat of this industry. If you're building a community, whether that's personally or for an actual project, you have to have some sort of footprint, some sort of opinion, some sort of um, activity on Twitter. It's massive. And then same with Telegram. Telegram is such a great tool for community building. You'll have a lot of different group chats with respective communities that have extremely active groups that whether it's asking for questions, they're posting about different events, posting about different resources. There's so many different platforms for that. And then there's LinkedIn and LinkedIn has been my favorite. Um, LinkedIn is, in my opinion, where you meet some of the most serious builders in the ecosystem. If someone's reaching out to you genuinely, because you do get a lot of spam, unfortunately, you're going to be a hundred times, hundred percent, you know, more inclined to jump on a Zoom with them, learn more about their background. And that's globally, guys. It's not just in your local communities or just in the US. LinkedIn, all these social media platforms gives you the opportunity to connect with an individual from every continent in our world. And that's a beautiful benefit of being in Web3. Personal branding examples. Um, once again, shout out to Rachel. She has been a huge just believer in, in my path, my journey, and has given me a lot of unique opportunities. Kind of looking at the bottom right, oh, uh, we did a Twitter space with my dear friend Sweetman.eth and Valerie. Um, just, I think, similar to this conversation, we were talking about personal branding, talking about marketing, talking about building community. And this is where this passion piece comes in as well too, guys. This bottom left one, progressive relations. That was an event that I DJed at. I can probably, you know, there's numerous events that I've DJed at in this space and it's allowed me to connect with clients, build friendships, which is so important in this space and just have another avenue of myself, music that other people can relate to. So it's like, once again, common ground. And music is obviously a huge, a huge piece of that. Um, we've done some Twitter spaces that proof of talent, always educating the ecosystem on the latest trends, what their, uh, you know, top tips for any candidates and clients breaking into the space. You know, whether you're already at a project or you're looking to break in, the biggest thing is raising your hand and saying, hey, I want to step into this. I want to take initiative. I think this can help our brand grow. I think this can help myself stick out. Differentiation is everything. So how does branding differ, differ from traditional work to Web3? Massive, massively different. As I spoke on the social media slide, a lot gets done digitally and through social media in this ecosystem. You know, you can have deals, partnerships being built via Telegram. And a lot of, a lot of people that aren't in this ecosystem, even people that are, might not even know that's happening. And because it is globally distributed, you might have teams that have 30 different, that have people from their team that are representing 30 different countries. I know consensus is like up there with that number, which is unheard of in traditional work. You know, there's so many different regulations and stipulations for larger corporations about having people work and live in other countries for security reasons. With uh, number two being more decentralized, right? The beauty in this is um, in, a, in the corporate environment, because these organizations are so big, you will have less impact. You're really trying to climb a ladder. And this decentralized model with the team being a lot smaller, as an individual, your ROI and opportunity for impact in organization is massive. It, it's really about what you put in. What you put in is what you'll get out and purpose-driven opportunities. People that come to work in Web3 are driven by a mission, a mission to create a better world and a better society, giving back power to the users, allowing the unbanked to be banked through crypto. Whereas 
some of these other industries, obviously they're, they're mission driven as well too, but every single person that you'll meet in this space is, is trying to accomplish something bigger than themselves, which I think is so beautiful and is a big reason why I'm still here as well. Wow. This is, uh, this is everything, right? Who, you know, and not just who, you know, but also who knows you, who trusts you building trust and credibility, especially as someone that's new coming into this space, build a foundation that is strong, that can't be moved. A re your reputation is everything. What are people saying about you when they're not around you? Hopefully really, really good things. Hopefully you should connect with so-and-so. These relationships will continue to compound. And I'll go back to what I mentioned about transaction, being transactional. It's a massive no-no in the space, red flag in Web3. We're all about building long-term relationships. In fact, Sometimes it's best to start with a friendship. Once again, using Rachel as a, as an example, using Sweetman Dottieth, my friend, Max Kaufman, head of media Helica, the amount of people they've introduced me to the amount of different opportunities they provided to me, the insights, the support on my content and my communities, because I'm reciprocating that same energy to them too. So really double down on your relationships, whether that's online or in person. And there's so many opportunities in this ecosystem to connect with people in person at conferences all over the world. One, one comment I want to make there too, Remy, um, another big component to building trust in the community and building reputation is adding value wherever you can, right? Just showing up for others and adding value and building those symbiotic relationships. Um, I, I have found, you know, just showing up for you and, and teeing up opportunities for you and, you know, seeing you at events, um, it, it's just been exciting. So it's, it's um, really a big part of uh, networking is adding value wherever you can. Absolutely. And I, I think going back to the very first step in the presentation, through that self-discovery phase, through that reflection of awareness, what are areas that you can add value to someone, no matter who you meet? Can you leave? Can that person leave with an impact? I think that's something me and you do so well, right? A big component for me is introductions. Based off of so-and-so's passion, so-and-so's career, so-and-so's interest, why don't you go and meet this person as well? Or because we're both in BD, right? A client, a candidate, I might not be working with them, but they list off companies they're interested in. Oh, why well, have a connection there? Why don't I make an introduction? Am I getting anything in return when I'm doing this? Often, no, but that's okay. It's about set, like honestly spreading really good energy because it's gonna come back. And if you're doing that with relationships, you will have a very successful career in whatever you do. I love that. And one other thing to note is that it's a small world in Web3. Like, I feel like we're all like one or two touch points away from each other in the space. Uh, it's it's still a new emerging space. So uh, it's a very small world. And I encounter people that often know a lot of mutual connections. So your reputation really does matter in Web3. No, I second that. Could not could not agree more. And, you know, wanted to provide some resources. Um, I actually just spoke with uh, one of the top leadership and development leaders in the space, Lisa Woken. She's also one of the founding members of Talent Dow. She talked to me about the strength survey. And this is with via Institute of Character. It allows you to do a reflection and analysis on what your strengths are through a questionnaire. I highly recommend as you know, you're getting started to check this out. It, it's amazing to use different tools and resources to understand more about yourself. Um, the second resource is LinkedIn learning. There's so many different resources and workshops just on LinkedIn in general. I guarantee you, you can go and find a branding leader or a exec in the space, whatever it may be, that's doing a LinkedIn Live, doing a workshop, doing a Twitter space, whatever it may be. So use these tools to your you know, best ability, right? They're right in front of you. You know, all the information, especially in this day and age, is right in front of you. 
And thirdly, podcasts. I'm a big believer in personal development and transformation. And like these guys may not be within the Web3 and crypto ecosystem, but these guys know how to change people's lives. And to really become successful in this space, you, you need to be very curious of, about yourself. You need to be curious about different areas that are holding you back from achieving what you want to achieve. It's that curiosity and that hunger, that drive to be better. So highly recommend checking out Simon Sinek, Start With Why. One of the best books was something that I actually read at the beginning of my entrepreneurial career. It's not what you do, it's why you do it, right? And I think that that storytelling element creates connection. Um, Jay Shetty, he's incredible. Jay Shetty and Lewis Howes, I don't even need to dive into those guys. Please check them out. And I'll kind of wrap this up. Authenticity is key. How can you differentiate yourself from other people? What about you makes you stand out from others? Why would people want to connect with you? A big thing about authenticity is doing the things that you love, not building things for others, not creating for others, but doing it out of the kindness of your heart. And not every time is that going to be successful or attract a ton of people, but you do know that you're doing it from a genuine place. That's something that I've learned throughout my career. It's something I'm doubling down this year on as well. It's not about how many comments you get, how many likes you get. You know, even if it's five people, that's five new people that you can connect with. And that's massive. Less is more. Less is more, guys. So be authentic. Yeah. Um, so I, I have just been jotting down a lot of notes, listening to you speak and uh, writing up some questions, uh, just really trying to listen to you and, and absorb the message here. Um, so I do have a couple of questions teed up for you. But before that, I just want to kind of dive into the open discussion here and highlight a couple of things that I have also learned um, through building up my personal brand and working in Web3. Um, I actually spoke at ETH Denver this year and, and kind of went deeper into speaking about uh, some of the things you should do when when working in Web3 and some tips for, for people just getting involved. Um, so number one, I, I just want to offer this advice to students listening. If you're not on LinkedIn already, number one is get on LinkedIn uh, if you're not already. Uh, number two, showcase your professional wins. Document your professional journey. Um, I really believe you need to market yourself and advocate for yourself. You are always going to be your biggest advocate when it comes to your professional journey. And it's up to you to advocate for, you know, what you're worth, what your time is worth. I think that's something to be really clear on when embarking in any professional endeavor or relationship. Another thing that Remy mentioned about the podcast, right? Um, YouTube is your friend. Podcasts are your friends. Don't be afraid to dive in online and follow uh, people who are doing the things that you want to do. And we're actually, uh, funny enough, we're doing another workshop coming up that I'm happy to tease here a little bit. Um, but we're going to be talking about taking lessons from Web 2 marketing and bringing that into Web 3 projects. So I think it's important to take the lessons from Web 2 that have worked as far as marketing goes. And don't be afraid to use that in Web 3. So yeah, Remy, on the topic of personal brand development, are there any common pitfalls to avoid in the space when um, building your personal brand, marketing yourself uh, and relationship building? Yeah, I think like through research as well, and that's step two, it's like, I think a lot of people will almost copy or duplicate what others are doing. Um, and I think like, that's due to not taking like the proper time of, of reflection as to like what your niche is enough res research on like different ways to market yourself. So I would recommend definitely like finding your own voice. I think that's, that's, that's a challenge for people sometimes, you know, and, and I think that can be boring and, and like hard for people to relate to. I also wanted to mention like lack of consistency um that, that kind of came up in my head like you'll see people post every now and then and like that's that's great to give updates but i think it's the people that are showing up like two three four times just like being at top of mind i think for me like literally people are like oh i always hear content on my feed I'm like awesome i'm doing the right thing you know yeah. like 
and and just like using different channels as well so i think like um yeah consistency is just such a massive piece to it that actually so i have another question uh somewhat related to that so seeing you constantly get in front of a camera and create content has actually inspired me tremendously uh you are always popping up on my feed whether it's linkedin whether it's instagram twitter uh you are very consistent with posting and i'm curious like what brought you to get more active with getting in front of a camera and creating content um and also a little like uh, i guess thank you for for inspiring me to show up and get comfortable in doing this as well <laughs> Yeah, of course. No, I, I, I appreciate that. And um, I mean, it, it dates back to 2018, to be honest, when I started my clothing brand, like as a CEO, um, I was doing a lot of just research on entrepreneurship. Gary Vee at the time was like really, really big into that, um, you know, being a Gen Z, like that was a very big inspiration for me. And I just started putting the camera in front of my face, <laughs> like when I was 18 or 19 years old, recording myself saying inspirational, just like inspiring other people, creating an, an motivational content. And so I've consistently had so much experience with that. I've created podcasts, been a guest on different podcasts, now speaking in public as well. So kind of dating, like you said, uh, to the last question, like it's consistency. Um, but that doesn't mean I'm not nervous, right? That doesn't mean it doesn't take me like maybe 10 to 20 tries to actually post a video when I'm speaking. You know, it, I'm still, there's still a lot of challenges of just like worthiness and just like that confidence to put yourself out there every time I do it. But that's just become my brand, right? People, I, I maybe like expect that from me. They expect the vulnerability. They expect that human touch because I've been doing it over and over again. Yeah, I, I actually look forward to it in, in our group. I mean, we probably have the most overlap when it comes to being in groups together. Uh, just seeing you consistently share videos of you getting in front of a camera. Like I know for me, like when I first started my podcasting journey at Crypto Sapiens, it was kind of scary getting in front of a camera and recording myself. Like. I find it um, kind of an interesting phenomenon because I was able to go up and publicly speak. And last year I, you know, traveled around the world publicly speaking and I felt like I was able to connect with people in the room and kind of bounce energy off of the audience and everything. But when it came to getting in front of a camera and recording, there's a level of permanence with that. And also not knowing the person on the other end, how they're going to receive that. It's kind of like accepting putting yourself out there fully and uh that's something you've been you know really good at remy and and you've encouraged me to get more comfortable in doing this because i mean video content is so important nowadays i mean even for algorithms right for uh if you want to touch more on social media how creating video content actually helps you to perpetuate your social uh, media brand so video content is the closest form of content that people can like connect to the real version of you right you don't really know like who someone is like actually through written content but when someone's getting like has the confidence to like literally put out like a three four minute maybe even a podcast and speak and have opinions and share reflections like that's a very vulnerable thing to do so yeah video content is always all always the best, you know, being able to add captions in there, being able to make relatable content. Um, I think it's extremely transformative for someone's personal brand. And I think that kind of segues into like confidence, right? I think the biggest challenge for people on social media is having the confidence to post, putting themselves out there. And that's why that first step, once again, like going back to awareness and those podcast resources I talked about of just like personal transformation and development are so important because confidence isn't something you're born with. It's a skill. It takes time to develop. Um, and, you know, there's no reason it can't be you. Wow. That's, that's really powerful, Remy. And um, I'm curious, like on the step of implementation also, like, what has helped you in regards to tooling and uh, growing your personal brand? Um, I know, you know, a lot of people are using AI tools nowadays to, you know, uh, create content. So I'm, I'm curious, like, if you've used any tools specifically that have helped you in, in your uh, pro professional journey. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a great question. I mean, um, Buffer is like a really, really good tool for social media, like scheduling and posting. Um, 
I'd say as well, cap cut. If you're trying to make like short form content with like captions, it like creates the templates for you. It's like very much so for like TikTok, um, you no know, more video content as well. And I think like just having those captions there too, like makes the person 10 times more engaged. You know, that's something I learned and, and really wanted to implement. I'm trying to think what else I've, I've used. Obviously, ChatGPT, right? Um, I will always write my posts like from scratch from the beginning, but just checking for grammar, checking how can I make more impact? What are some other ways I can engage with my audience? I always try and use that tool to take it a step further. Um, if you're wanting to create graphics, you know, from your imagination using Midjourney, that's also a really, really cool tool. And it's crazy what that can spit out, the more descriptive and detailed you can be. So, um, yeah, I, I challenge anyone listening to like do research on this. As someone trying to build their personal brand, content creation, building relationships, this is literally the best time with the amount of resources at our disposal, especially with AI. So anyone jumping into this, please feel free to reach out to me as well for tips and resources on this. But like, I highly recommend to study and learn like, how do I leverage this? And I guarantee you organizations are going to make that a requirement as well for you to know how to use it. So. Absolutely. Well, Remy, I, I want to thank you so much for taking the time today. I really loved your presentation. It was right up my alley. Uh, it's something I've been very passionate about for years in Web3. And, you know, seeing you and in, in your journey unfold has been really inspiring. Um, you know, you're part of the reason I'm here today, getting in front of a camera and making content like this. So um, thank you so much, man. And I guess if you have any parting words of wisdom or if you want to share uh, with the students how they can connect with you, we'll go ahead and close out. I would say if not now, then when? right? Take the lead, take action. It's not going to come to you. You have to go and get it. Thank you guys. Thank you, UE. Absolutely. Appreciate Thank you so much, Remy.